In this video today, we're going to create a SWAT attack and we're also going to create a state machine to handle the different state of our game so we can display our animation better and we can control a little bit better all the state of our player. Uh, this video is part of my uh, 2D Metroidvania series. This is the fifth episode out of like 15 to 20 episodes on how to create a 2D Metroidvania with God of War 2. The asset is available in the description and uh, you can also find in the description the link for my, uh, my game, Lone Knight that you can wishlist on Steam at the moment, which is a 2D Metroidvania that should be released normally this year, this time. And uh, you can also find my latest course where I am making a 2D RPG with a crafting system, an inventory and a dialogue manager. And also in that same course, I am making as well an introduction to 3D in Godot 4. Without further ado, let's get started. So now in this video, we're going to start to create our swirl. We're going to be able to use the animation we have already created in the first video, and we're going to implement a state machine to make sure that we can display our animation nicely. And we're going to also make sure that we can display the collision shape of the swirl the way we want, and uh, also that we can trigger that collision, uh, that uh, swirl attack when we want it. So for that, I'm going to go back to my player script, uh, even actually my player scene, and uh, just to remind you, uh, I am on Anim and I'm going back to my uh, sword attack. And my sword attack is made of four uh, different images. If you haven't um, that, uh, if, you, if you don't have this, you just need to go back to the first video of this series. Uh, that's where I've created that. So, and that um, that animation is composed of four frames. And here I have my first animation, uh, my first frame. Here I have the two uh, frames where my sword is actually activated. And here. I don't have my sword anymore. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go back to my sword area right here and I need to move it. So I'm clicking on my sword, I'm clicking here on the move mode and I'm going to move my sword area around here and I'm just going to resize the collision shape a bit so it um, display a bit better. So my collision shape is like that. I'm leaving a bit of room so like this that makes the life a bit easier for the player. And so now what I want to do is like I don't want to have my collision shape activated at all time because right now if I go to debug and here I'm clicking on visible collision shape, if I launch my game right now you're gonna see that my I'm gonna have two problems. First my sword uh, collision hitbox is always uh, activated and also one of the things that I have as a problem is that when I go to the left my uh, collision box stay to the right. So first what we're going to do is we're going to tackle the collision uh, shape of my sword being not always activated. So for that we need to go back to our animation, need to sword, and here I can go to my collision shape uh, 2D from the sword right here. So this one actually I can rename it. I can rename it uh, sword collider like that. So like this, uh, the name will be displayed in the animation layer. So I can come here so to my sword collider, I am on my sword animation, and now I can come here to disable, and you can see that per default it is not disabled. So I can click on like this, and I can now key that, and I'm not going to create a reset track, I don't need it, and then I'm going to click on create. And so now my animation at the first frame is disabling my collision shape. And so now here, I can actually uh, tick off that and key that, and I can come here and I can key it again like this and then here I can untick that and so now my animation is uh, just my collider is activated only on those two frames. So for now I can't test that apart like in the, the, the player right here you can see that it works but I need now to have like um, uh, an input but first before we do that we're gonna just go back to our player because I want to uh, tackle the problem of the positioning of our sword. So right now if I just go back to my sword right here, uh, my sword area 2D, if I go to transform here we have the position and you can see that the position uh, is uh, basically here so that's 19 and 10 and so what I want to do is I want when I go to the left I want to uh, globally do the same thing on the y-axis but instead of that I'm gonna put it on negative and so like this it will change my um, my collider here but you can see we have a little bit of a thing here so like my sword uh, my sword area collider is not the same than my actual sword collider right here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this one here, go and move and make sure that it aligns perfectly with my sword 2D right there. So now I, come, I can come here, I can just put that like this and now it displays. Okay, so now what I want to do 
is I want to access that through code. I'm going to do that through code. It's going to be way better. So I'm going to go back to my player, player script, and I'm going to go where I am uh, um, controlling when my player is changing side, which is the beginning of my movement function. It's right here. So what I can do is here, I can just by putting a dollar sign, I can get uh, access to my sword, sword collider. So here I can do sword and I can do dot position dot x and here i can set it to the position that i want so per default my sword is on the position dot x of 19 so here i can just put 19 and then here what i can do is i can copy that line and i can come here and instead of 19 because here we are going to uh, the left because we are on negative here i can put minus 19 and i'm just gonna make sure that i don't have that space right here so now let's have a look i'm gonna come here I'm going to uh, go to my visible collision shape on debug to make sure that I can actually see my collision shape. And so my collision shape is here. And if I go to the left, now my collision shape is to the left. And if I go to the right, now my collision shape goes to the right. So that's perfect. So now we need to just um, tackle the fact that we need to disable our collision shape. Uh, of this world and so for that we can do it through code uh, in the ready function the ready function is the function that is launched at the beginning of the game so here what we can do is i can do also a dollar sword and this time i can uh, look for my sword collider right there and here i can just access the disability the the, the, the fact to be able to disable my sword collider right here because here you can see disable if i over it it's a property disabled this is the code name uh, that we can use to access that specific part of the inspector into the code and so here i can go disable equal to true and so now if i launch my game my, uh, this, my uh, collider is disabled per default. So that's perfect. So now we need to create the input for actually uh, triggering our sword. So for that, I'm going to go to project, project setting. I'm going to go to input map. And here I'm going to create a new action. Uh, and that action, I'm going to keep the, uh, I'm going to keep the naming, uh, the, the nomenclature of uh, Godot. So I'm going to do UI underscore sword. You can name it as you want. I'm just going to uh, untick that button here. So here I can do UI Sword, click on Add, and here what I'm going to do is like I'm going to go click on the plus. I'm going to uh, tap uh, on this my the, the key that I want to map to that specific action. So for the keyboard, that's going to be X, and for uh, my controller because my controller is plugged at the moment to my uh, PC through USB, I'm going to also click on X like this. And so me, I have an Xbox type controller, so that's this one right here sorry i'm just click so here is the xbox x that i have here so i'm just going to click on ok and so now i have those two actions perfect so now that this is done what i can do is i can uh, first create a function and that function i'm going to call it sword and here for now we're going to pass and so now here what we need to do i'm going to uh, shut the output now what we need to do is that we need to create a state machine. So a state machine is nothing than a list of state on which our player is, and we are using another variable to switch between those two states. So that's what we're gonna do. So here, under my, uh, my variable for jumping, here I'm gonna create a new space, uh, and I'm gonna say um, everything related to state machine. And so my state machine is going to have two things. First, it's going to have a variable that's going to be called current state that we're going to use to uh, transition from one state to another. And then here, we're going to have a, another variable that's going to be called an enumerator. And so for, for that in Godot, the short way is enum. And here, we need to give a name to that uh, enum. So for me, it's going to be player underscore states. And here, we're going to open a, a, a list with curly bracket. And for now, we're going to have two states, move and swell. Uh, I'm tapping it in uh, in all cap because that's the standard. Uh, and basically, what this is doing is that this enum uh, is uh, giving an, an integer to any element of this list. So this one move is zero, swell is one. And if we were, for example, having also dead, dead will be two, and so on and so on. And so when we are moving in one state, we'll make sure that we are not into another. This is very useful to make sure that you can display the right animation at the right time. So now that we have created that, what I can do is I can uh, set my variable current state to the main state that I want my um, game to be set into when I launch it. So here, when I am launching my game, I want my player state to be in the function movement because that function movement is uh, handling when he moves, when he doesn't move, 
and when it jump so this is going to be my default uh, state and i'm going to use it as a pivot point so i can uh, trigger other state in my game so for that i'm going to do variable current state and here i'm going to say equal player state so the enumerator that i've just created right here and i'm going to just now access one of the state that i've created right here and for that i just need to tap dot and then here i'm going to set it to move per default now that i've created that I can go to my function process delta and here I can remove that. That function process delta, I can also uh, change it and here I can do physics process delta because we are using physics and it's better in Godot on average to use uh, physics process delta when we are using physics. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just indent a bit and I'm going to create what is called a match statement. A match statement is a switch statement if you're coming from Unity. And this is basically something that we use to trigger either one state or another. So we are uh, creating that by saying match. And here we're going to take our variable current state that we have created right here. So I'm just going to say current state. And here I'm going to say that if my player state is on dot move then what i want to do is i want to indicate to godot that he need to check the movement delta function that is holding all my movement of my uh, player state move and if it's not the case if my player underscore state is on sword then i want him to take a look at the sword function that we have created right here so i can just copy it like this and i can just come here and i can just put sword so now that we have created that, what we need to do is in our sword function, what we want to do is we want to access our animation. So here we just need to do dollar sign anim dot play, and here we're gonna take our sword animation. And I think I named it sword with a capital S, if I remember right. Yes, that's right. So now we have that, we're gonna be able to toggle that uh, that state uh, sword. The only problem that we're going to have is we're going to not be able to go back to our main state because we need to have a way to, uh, to trigger that transition. And so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to create another function. And that function, I'm going to call it uh, reset underscore state. And here, I'm going to just say that in that function, reset state, I'm going to set it to be current state. So the variable that we are using for uh, toggling our, uh, the state of our player. I'm going to set it to be equal to player underscore state, which is our enum dot move. So like that, when we're going to be finishing that, uh, that, sword, uh, that sword animation, we're going to be able to uh, toggle back the uh, move state of our player. And we can do that through code, but we also can just do that through the animation. So I'm going to go back on my animation here. And here on sword, uh, the sword animation, I can go here to add track and I can pass that. First, what you need to do is we need to save. And when you are, once you have saved it, you can click on Add Track, Call Method Track. Here you can uh, call the node that hold the uh, script. So for us, it's the player. I can click on OK. And I'm going to create that track here. And so basically what I want is like when my animation is finished, so around here, I want to make a right click, Insert Key, and I want to take my Reset State function. So here I click on Open. And so now we miss only one thing, which is that we need to uh, be able to trigger our, uh, our sword attack. And so for that, we need to use the input that we have created. So what we're going to do here is after our jump, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to say if input with a capital I is underscore action, just press. And here we're going to look for our UI sword. Then here what I want to do is I just want to change my current state. So here I'm going to say current state is equal to player underscore state dot move uh, dot uh, sword, sorry dot move <laughs> uh, so now we are good and so now basically every time we're gonna press our UI sword which for me is the X key on the keyboard and the X button on my controller it's gonna indicate to Godot that the current state is changed and now I go to the player state dot sword Godot gonna take a look at what is in our player state dot sword in our match statement right here. And you're gonna see that this is the sword function that is right there. So you're gonna take a look at what you need to do. And so here you're gonna see that you need to like display that animation. And then at the end of our animation, in our animation in itself, we have the fact to reset the state of our player to the current state player state dot move. So now with all that build up done, let's see. I can I come here and if I press my uh, X button, you can see that now I can uh, I can uh, 
just like activate my squirrel. So this is perfect. We only have one problem here, which is that we can't move when we are like uh, giving an attack. And this is not maybe something that you want to do. So for that, there's a solution that you can use is that here. Uh, first, what we can do is we can use move and slide. It's not going to be enough. Uh, it's going to lead to a problem. I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to come here. And so I'm going to put that in big. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to uh, activate my swirl. And you can see that right now, you can't see it, but like I'm moving uh, while I don't press the key anymore. So here, what we need to do for uh, being able to control the movement is that we need to just control that. Uh, we just need to copy that uh, part of the code here that is handling our input in which, uh, in which direction we are going. Uh, we need to do control uh, C. And here I'm going to create another function just uh, on top of reset state. I'm going to call it input underscore movement. And in that function, I'm just going to pass what I've copied here. And uh, I'm just going to remove some stuff. So first I need to pass the delta in my input movement because Godot is not happy. And then I need to remove those elements right here because I don't need it automatically, those ones. So here I can remove that and I can remove that like this. And so now what I can do is like the move and slide that we have created here, I can cut it by doing control X, I can come here and pass it. And so now that we have done that, we should be able to be able to handle our movement. The only thing that we need to do is we need to pass our input movement here into our swirl function. So I need to come here, put that here, and I need also to pass the delta because uh, the swirl function doesn't have the delta per default. And now that we have done that, we just need to also here in our match statement, we need to pass the delta to our swirl. And so now that we have done that, we will be able to control the speed of our player. So for example, here, I can pass like this. The only thing that we are missing here, I've just noticed, is that we don't have any scenario when uh, we are not uh, moving anymore. So I just need to also copy uh, from my uh, first function movement. I need to also copy that part of the code right here. And I need to put it into my input movement. So here I need to come here and I need to put that. And that's it. So voila. So now let's have a look. I can come here and if I press, you can see that now I can control my movement way better. Uh, there's also one problem that we have and I made it on purpose. It's like you can see that I can, for example, go to the right and activate my sword. But it makes me like if I want to go to the left uh, straight, uh, straight away, like it doesn't flip my player. So for that, what we also need to do, if you want to do that, is just to copy our scale right here. So I need to copy my scale. I can put it back in my input movement like this. And here, on input, uh, when input is negative to zero, I just need to put it on minus one. And so now it will flip my player. And this has the, uh, the possibility to just like create a, a good, uh, um, how to say, a good swirl mechanic that is adaptable and that we can use to do whatever we want. There's also one thing that I haven't toggled yet. I will toggle that. In, I will um, tackle that in the next video. Uh, it's like when we are into the air, because right now, for example, you can see that when I slash, when I am into the air, it's not something that is like working nicely. So we're going to do that in the next video where we're also going to create something that we can destroy with our crate. So I will see you in the next video. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe. I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.